EEG stands for electroencephalogram, which records the summation of excitatory and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. EEG is recorded by placing a set of electrodes on the scalp. On this cartoon, you see labels on the left side and on the right side. As you might note that this is the left side, so this is placed in a way that you're looking at the left side and the right side of the scalp. This is the right ear here, this is the right ear, and this is the left ear. So we have a set of electrodes placed at specific distances from each other. So you have all these electrodes. These are in fact small metal cap electrodes that are placed in these locations, in these spots. When you're looking at this recording, you will note that the all the odd numbers, so 1, 3, 1, 5, 7, these are recording activity from the left side. All the even numbers are recording activity from the right side. And electrodes which end with the letter Z are recording activity from the midline. So this is the left side, this is the right side, this is the midline. The alphabets F, P means frontopolar. F3 is also a frontal electrode. C3, it's in the central location, so it is between the two ears. P3 is locating, uh, recording from the parietal region and O is recording from the occipital region. So O1 from the left occipital, O2 from the right. Likewise T5 from the left temporal, T6 from the right temporal. Odd numbers are recording from the left side of the brain. Even numbers are recording from the right side of the brain. Something that you need to understand here. So let's talk about the concept of the different frequencies. So there are a number of frequencies that electroencephalographers look for. So alpha frequency, alpha band, ranges from 8 to less than 13, less than 13. So if you have one second, let's say these two lines are separated by one second, and if you count the number of waves between these two lines, so in this case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so this falls between 8 to 13, so you call it an alpha frequency. If the frequency is between 13 and onwards, 13 or more, you call it a beta frequency. So let's say that this is one second, these two lines are separated by one second, and if you see very, very, very tiny waves, so these are all, these are waves, and if you count these waves, these are more than 13 waves in that one second, and you will call this as a beta frequency theta frequency ranges from 4 to less than 8. So if this is one second apart and you count the waves, you have one wave, two waves, three waves, four waves, close to five waves in this one second you will call it as a theta frequency. And then we talk about delta frequency. Delta frequency. So delta frequency is any frequency less than four waves per second. So this is less than four. So if this is one second, and you see these very, very slow waves. These are delta waves, and this is a delta frequency. So alpha frequency spans from 8 to 13 hertz. 
this is alpha frequency beta frequency 13 Hertz or 13 waves or more you call it beta frequency if the number of waves spans between 4 to 8 you call it theta frequency and if you have less than 4 waves in that one second you call it delta frequency so let's move on this is a normal EG this EG is recorded so you see here so let me just draw here you see here FP1 and F7 so it basically means that this electrode FP1 and this electrode F7 are, are represented here the potential difference between FP1 and F7 so let's say FP1 to F7 the potential difference is shown in this channel here you see it in this channel likewise potential difference between F7 and T3 is shown here T3 T5 T5 O1 so as you see that since these are all odd numbers here these upper four channels are recording from the left side and the next four channels which all end with an even number are recording from the right side of the brain in a normal EG there are fast frequencies so the beta frequencies are more prominent in the frontal head region and the alpha frequencies are most prominent in the occipital head region specifically during quiet wakefulness as you can see here this is the alpha frequency which is highlighted here so we call it an occipital dominant alpha rhythm and you have the fast frequency but if you look underneath that fast frequency you also have these slow waves here these slow waves these are delta waves so this this frequency is the delta frequency but this very very fast frequency right here in the straight line so probably if you if you were looking at this this very very fast frequency that is beta frequency so you have delta frequency with superimposed beta frequency and you see this beta frequency highlighted here if you look at this page FP1 there is a potential this channel records the potential difference between FP1 and FP2 and you see beta frequency so if in this one second you count all these waves these would be more than 13 waves so you call it a beta frequency and here you see a mixture of delta frequency so this is a delta wave but you have some tiny theta waves resting on top of it so this is a delta wave but there are some faster frequencies that are superimposed on the delta waves and here you see an alpha rhythm very nice alpha rhythm this is O1 so this is occipital since it ends with one this is from the left side and it's compared to common average reference and those two dark green lines are one second apart and you see almost nine to ten waves in that one second so you call it an alpha frequency and an alpha rhythm here you're looking at theta frequency so there is predominantly theta frequency here so between four to eight hertz four to less than eight hertz but you see some faster frequency that are superimposed on the theta frequency and that's it for today thank you